Hi, my name is Ben Alsop, and I am the Money Gallery Curator at the British Museum. Now, the object you're looking at here, you can be forgiven for thinking, at first glance, it's a banknote. There appears some form of issuing authority, there's symbolism of one kind or another. There are words used like bearer, value, exchange. And there are three signatures of seemingly important people scrawled on the right-hand side and a serial number of 2202. Most strikingly, on the back, there is what I can only describe as some kind of trippy pattern, similar to a Magic Eye poster from the 1990s. As an idea of size, this printed note is a little smaller than half a piece of A4 paper and was indeed intended and used as a form of currency. Now, what separates this most starkly from the traditional banknotes issued in the UK in the 19th century is not the presence of a number, and there's quite evidently the number one here, but it's what that number represents. This note does not represent pounds, the currency of the United Kingdom. Instead, it represents time. It represents one hour of labour, and time in this case is most certainly money. Now, the note was issued in 1832 by the Equitable Labour Exchange, a name you can see at the top of the note. This particular exchange was in Gray's Inn Road, which is actually not far from where I am today in the British Museum. Now, it's the signatures that are important at this point. The signature of the man behind the endeavour can be seen on the right-hand side. It's kind of a tight, angular script, and it's the name of Robert Owen. Now, he's the person whose idea this money was. He was born in 1771 in Newtown in Wales, and he became important because he owned and managed for a while a mill in Lanark where he tried to improve the quality of life for his workers. He tried to reduce the working day by an hour from 11 and three quarter hours to 10 and three quarter hours. Very good of him. He created the Institute for the Formation of Character in 1816, which is actually a school for the education of the children who worked at the mill. The aim of the note was quite straightforward. Goods were produced by artisans and workers and they exchanged the note corresponding to the time it took them to produce the items. So these notes were an attempt by Owen to ensure the worker received the proper reward for their produce. He felt that the traditional money that was in use in the UK at the time had made man ignorant, individually selfish, blindly urged him forward to create but deprived him of the wisdom to enjoy, and his new system would therefore let prosperity loose on the country. Now, if we look at the imagery, this is, of course, relates to the central tenets of what Owen was trying to achieve. You can see a beehive on the left, this idea of workers contributing together to the success of the hive, to the success of the community as a whole, and everyone benefiting from that work. You have scales on the right-hand side, which represent justice. There are words such as industry and integrity emblazoned on the notes to give you a sense of the fundamental politics of Owen himself. And whilst it says the note is worth one hour, there is actually a value given underneath. So the value of an hour is equal to sixpence. Now these notes could be used in the local area. They would be honoured by local tradesmen. Several theatres and a toll gate on Waterloo Bridge also accepted the money. So they were a local currency of sorts. First week deposits when the National Equitable Labour Exchange was introduced was £10,000. And within 17 weeks, deposits totalling over 440,000 work hours were produced. But therein lies the problem with the note itself. There is an inherent problem, and that is it's possible to take longer to make an inferior product. So if you're not particularly skilled, you could get more recompense for someone who is particularly skilled and does a job quicker. And also the exchanges who were taking in the goods became overstocked, overstocked with goods that they just simply couldn't sell. Equitable labour exchanges only lasted a couple of years. And the note is interesting, not because of this failure, but because it shows us, gives us an insight into a political doctrine. Whilst ultimately not successful, it's a fantastically interesting example of how one person can try and completely change society, and fundamental to that change is the control and the reappraisal of money, a through line through history which is absolutely fundamental to human society and has been for thousands of years. So if you enjoyed this Decoded, why not like and subscribe to the British Museum YouTube channel?